Hello everyone, this is Alice Davis and I'm here with Led by Faith today. We're going to be studying Esther this week. But first let's go to the Father. Father, in Jesus' name we thank you for your word. We thank you that by your spirit you get things done. <clears throat> we thank you, Father God. <clears throat> We thank you for the people that you've been able to use throughout the ages to further the kingdom of God. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for every one of them. We thank you for your blessing that rested on their lives. And we thank you that you prospered the work of their hands in the call that you have on, on the, had on their lives, Father. We thank you that you still do these things today. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to be studying about Esther and the call on her life and what she did and was able, what God was able to get done through Esther for the kingdom of God. Our text for loving God's loving kindness is Psalm 63, 3. And it says in the King James Version, Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Well, this week we're going to be talking about, today we're going to be talking about how God made room for Esther Love, God's loving kindness makes room. And you'll see what I mean by that. In Esther's day, Esther lived about 3,000 years ago. And she was a Jewish girl. And she was from Jerusalem. And there was a king in Susa who had a desire to continue to be married. So he had uh, Esther wound up in his palace. <laughs> I'll put it like that. Because we're just talking about Esther. We're not talking about everybody. We're just talking about Esther. Esther was brought into his kingdom, into his palace, and she was given uh, overseers that would tend to everything she had need of. And it's King Ahasuerus, which is the king that was over Susa at the time. He had a desire to be married, so he had his officers bring in the ladies to see which one pleased him to be his queen. He had a desire to have a lady beside him. And this plea and when he met Esther, it pleased him. Now in the palace there was Mordecai. He was the son of Jair. He was a Benjamite, and they were out of the Levite household of God. Remember, there were 12 patriarchs. There were 12 sons. Jacob had 12 sons, and one of those was the tribe of Judah, and that's the one that Esther originally came from. Her name was, she was given the name Hadassah when she was born. God, people, when they give, they, when the people in the Bible times gave names to their children that they're in the Bible, and those that, even those that weren't in the Bible, but we can see it from those that are in the Bible, 
were given names because of the purpose that, and the calling of God on their lives. That's why it's important to find out in your heart what that child's name is before it's born. Within like three days, within the time you're in the hospital today, when you have a baby, they're asking you what you want to call it. What do you? What's its name? Because typically people have a name. They want to name their baby before they leave the hospital. They have it named. That's a short amount of time, so it takes prayer and getting the knowledge of God and His direction in what that child's name should be. Esther's name was Hadassah. Now, her, Mordecai was actually a helper. He was Jair's, uh, Jair was Mordecai's father. And He knew the covenant well and because he, and he knew it well because he had served in the Levites as a helper there as well. He brought it when Hadassah's parents died. Hadassah's father was Je was Mordecai's uncle. So Mordecai's father and Hadassah's father were brothers. Well, Abihel and his wife passed away. They died, and it does not, the Bible does not tell us how. History books have not told how, that I have been, I've not been able to find out how, but they passed away. And she was left with no parents because they passed away. So Mordecai, Mordecai was like 40 years old. And Hadassah was like 8 years old when her parents passed away. So she was left an orphan. And he took her as his daughter. This is their first cousins. Hadassah and Mordecai are first cousins. But because of the age difference, he could take her on as his daughter. And he treated her and talked to her and raised her as his daughter. And she was beautiful. She was very beautiful to look at. And I went and the Lord gave me these things. And I want to share them with you. Because it matters what you name your children. They named Hadassah. Hadassah. But what Hadassah means is it means myrtle. It's a myrtle tree. The myrtle tree, the entire plant of the, of the myrtle tree is a fragrant, has a fragrant oil about it. And like so many other Bible plants, the myrtle is the only representative of its family in Israel. Well, Esther, Hadassah, who was given the name Esther, became the only representative in Susa of her people. Makes a lot of sense. She was born Hadassah in, in, as a Jew. When, they, when she was, get, Mordecai gave her the name Esther because it was a pagan name. And the pagan name Esther means star. And not like a Hollywood star, okay? A biblical beacon of light 
among her among the people when she was brought into the palace she was brought in as Esther she became a beacon of light in the palace of King Ahasuerus and became a beacon of light not only unto the king but unto the people and we're going to see how God made room for Esther Hadassah in Susa. She was a heroine, a woman admired or idealized for her courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. That is amazing because everything that her names names uh because her name changed from Hadassah to Esther. If you look in Isaiah 61 3 and I took it out of the Amplified Classic because it gives a lot of clarity to it. It says to grant to consolate consolate consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament of a garland or diadem, which would be a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of expressive of praise instead of a heavy, burdened, and failing spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, lofty, strong, and magnificent, distinguished for uprightness, justice, and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And when I looked that scripture up, it led me to this one, Isaiah 60 and 21. And I took it from the Amplified Classic just as well. And it says, Your people also shall all be uncompromisingly and consistently righteous. They shall possess the land forever the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. We're going to see how God was able to take a Jewish young lady, bring her into the palace where he needed for her to be. See, God always knows what's going on in the spirit realm. Whether we can see it, know it, or understand it, he does. He needed her to be in the palace. And she pleased the king. She pleased King Ahasuerus. He could just look at her. And he was well pleased. Because have you ever noticed how you can, you can look at someone... And a lot of times you can see the qualities about that person. That's because they're walking in the right thing. They're doing right things. They're thinking right things. And it shows up in their demeanor, in the way they handle themselves, how they talk, how they command things about them. It shows up on the outside. Because they're living it on the inside. Esther, who was Hadassah, was already living these things on the inside. She was already a fruitful fragrance, a, a beautiful fragrance unto the Lord. Because the Lord knew her heart. It is God who knows the hearts of men, mankind which makes it a beautiful thing. She pleased the king well. 
and she was made queen of a nation and as well as a beacon of light in the place where she was serving God. If you turn over to Ephesians 2.10 in the Amplified Classic, it says, For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, which He planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which He prearranged, and made ready for us to live. In Ephesians 2.10 in the Passion Translation, it says, We have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the Anointed One, even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. Esther became a beacon of light in the place God had her in the palace with the king of the land. <laughs> that is awesome. Esther's home changed, her life changed, her name changed, and because she let this happen, many lives were changed by her presence and her actions when she was in the palace. Glory to God. Her cousin Mordecai honored the king by protecting his life and was used by God to bring Esther, who truly was Hadassah, that fragrant myrtle tree, into making her queen of a nation who would be turned to God. Because of the light of God that shined in Esther's heart, she was uncompromisingly, consistently righteous. If you read Esther 2, 6 through 7 in the King James Version, it says, Who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. That is amazing. If you look in Esther 2, 9 through 10, it says, And the maiden pleased him, speaking of the king, and she obtained kindness of him. She, in the King James, it says that he gave her favor. She obtained favor of the king. And he speedily gave her the things. He gave her things that she would need. You know, to, in today's world, we would say that we had a spa restroom in our home because he gave her everything she needed for, to make her beautiful, to, for her perfumes, for her hair, her makeup, her clothes, her shoes. Everything, her accessories were beautiful.
and such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens. He gave her seven women to help her keep her things so she could be beautiful. Because <laughs> he enjoyed looking at her. He just enjoys looking at her. <laughs> which were meat to be given her out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of women. He gave her the best place in the house. The best. He must have really enjoyed looking at her. In verse 20, it says, Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred who she really is. They did not know who Esther truly was. But they're fixing to find out. <laughs> they're about to know exactly who Esther is. For Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. She should not reveal it. You don't go around the church telling everybody you're this and you're thus and you're so. You let God deal with people's hearts. There's a lady. Esther was a heroine in the Bible. So was Sarah and Ruth and Abigail who married David. These were heroines. Deborah was a heroine. They were courageous women that fulfilled the call of God on their lives. And if you're a child of God and you're a woman, you can let God's light shine from you in a way that you can live your life to fulfill the destiny God has called for you to fulfill. There's a lady that God brought to my attention. I hadn't thought about her in a long time. In 19, on December, on December 1st, 1955, there was a person gonna, that tried to tell Rosa Parks where she could sit. And Rosa Parks believed God. In the face of that, she believed God. This lady was born in 1913. And she lived until 2005. Rosa Parks believed that all, God made all peoples equal. We're all humans. We're all humankind. But because she stood up for what she believed was right, which was biblically true, just like Esther did. Esther, we're going to see this week. Esther stood up for her people and saved them. She literally, in the natural, single-handedly saved her people, the Jewish nation, not just one and not a dozen, the entire nation of the Jews. She saved them. And Rosa Parks did this for her people. And she did it for her whole nation of people. That's how God can use you in this world, in the world of today. In Proverbs, and Rosa Parks didn't walk around telling everybody she's a Christian, she believes God, she's a believer, she's a true believer. She didn't even tell people she's an apostle, a prophet, a teacher. She didn't tell anybody anything. She just walked it out. 
That's what you do. And God has a reason for doing that, doing it this way. He said, God said in Proverbs 25, 1, and I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation, says, God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. But the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. It's just like a parent talking to a child when, he, when they say, you can do this, but do not do this. They have a reason, and it's up to the child. They had, you know, as children, we go before God to find out things. We get wisdom from Him. In James chapter 1, I believe it is, we can ask God for wisdom, and He gives it to us liberally, and he upbraids us not. So it's Esther was living by the wisdom of God that she had learned through the covenant. It was a very good thing. Mordecai taught her well, and it showed up in the way she helped rule a nation of peoples. So we're going to study Esther this week, and we're going to see just where God took it and how he did it. And know that he can do it through you too. You can rise up and be more than you ever dreamed you could be because God is with you if you are walking in his covenant. Well, I thank you for joining me here today for the lesson. And I pray that in everything that you set your hand to today, that you are blessed and led by faith.